Hello everyone, I am Julian Morris with the Channel 5 News. In the headlines, NBD launches new financing initiative expected to stimulate growth within the small business sector. Foreign Affairs Minister Honorable Kenneth Daru tells the UN Dominica has done well in managing COVID-19 cases and no community transmission as 7 out of 13 COVID-19 cases confirmed since the reopening of borders remain in isolation. The details after this. has been produced by the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, to help small businesses go digital. Good day, I am Rashida. I help families in the community to get everything they need without having to leave their homes. First, I started by presenting my business on WhatsApp. I also tell customers to take a photo of the sign for future orders. I keep all the numbers of my clients. With my database ready, I put together a catalog of products with prices listed to be shared with all my contacts. I also prepare promotions and baskets. When customers come by to collect their orders, we make sure they do not have to wait. Reactivate your business and discover new ways to reach your customers. More guides and templates are available for download. Visit bb.undp.org. eFuture is now. We are strong, we are resilient, and we will get through this together. But these are stressful times, and it's important to also practice good self-care. It's normal to feel overwhelmed, anxious, or afraid. But there is hope. Reach out to someone, connect with your friends, stay in touch with your community, and know that you are not alone. We're in this together. This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. Flow helps you stay connected to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy seven days of unlimited social messaging, three gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, 700 local anywhere calls and texts with the always on prepaid plan, all for $29. Keep your number when you switch to Dominica's most reliable LTE network. Buy wherever you top up, switch to Flow. It only gets better. A new avenue for small business owners to fund and grow their businesses, Andrea Louis tells us more. This as the National Bank of Dominica, NBD, launched its Small Business Guarantee Program. This program is a collaborative effort with the Eastern Caribbean Partial Credit Guarantee Corporation, ECPCGC, with support from the World Bank. Managing Director of the NBD, Ellingworth Edwards, says this program represents a milestone for the NBD and the small and medium enterprise sector. The ECCB signaled its intention and interest in formulating a regional approach to the servicing of the MSME sector, and that gave rise to the establishment of the Eastern Caribbean Partial Credit Guarantee Corporation and its flagship program the Partial Credit Guarantee Scheme. The ECPCGC required regional banks to apply for participation in the program. And we are happy to report that NBD was one of the first institutions within the ECCU region to be certified as an approved participating lender. Edwards reiterated the NBD's commitment to developing the small and medium-sized business sector in Dominica. Our commitment to the sector is strong and growing because we understand the critical role which that sector must play if we are to achieve sustainable growth and development of the domestic economy. Additionally, if we at NBD are to elevate the lives of the people whom we serve, we must make our presence felt in areas that will help our people to prosper. Among the eligibility criteria the business has to meet are an annual revenue of less than $2 million, employ less than 50 people, and the ability to provide at least 25% equity in the transaction. Manager of the Credit and Business Development Department of the NBD, Mina Blanchard, says a special focus will be placed on the Kainago Territory residents so they benefit from this program. Some of the focus sectors will include manufacturers, retailers, farmers, fishers, skilled workers, service providers such as contractors, mechanics, 
our hairdressers, taxi operators, and the list goes on. We will place special emphasis on the inclusion of Kalinago entrepreneurs as beneficiaries for this offer, mainly because of the restrictions they face in, in owning property in the Kalinago territory. The maximum loan amount under this program is $300,000, while the minimum loan amount is $5,000. The maximum repayment period is 10 years. Andrea Louis, Channel 5 News. As of Tuesday, 29th September, the total number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in Dominica was 31. Since the reopening of the country's borders, a total of 13 cases have been identified. The national epidemiology says they are between the ages of 2 and 59 years of age. All except one are asymptomatic. One has mild symptoms, namely shortness of breath, but no fever. Most of these cases 10 out of 13 of them are imported ones and have been placed at the quarantine facility on arrival. Only 3 out of 87 contacts that were traced tested positive for COVID-19. This means that 96% of the contacts were PCR negative. Currently, 7 out of 13 are at the quarantine facility, sorry, COVID facility, undergoing isolation phase. And the rest of them have fully recovered. So far, the transmission of COVID remains sporadic and is due to importation of cases. There is no evidence of community transmission. Meantime, one COVID certified taxi operator says there will be no compromising of safety protocols as the tourism sector slowly resumes operations. COVID-19 has presented a major challenge for Dominica's tourism sector, but significant numbers of taxi and tour operators are being trained on guidelines to keep themselves, their families and the country safe as they get back to work. For protection, all passengers must sit at the back of the vehicle. No passenger should sit in the front of the vehicle with the driver. All passengers must wear face masks, and so should the driver. Passengers before they enter the vehicle must wash or sanitize their hands. Transportation operators should have a daily routine temperature check on arrival at the airport. Vehicles should be sanitized prior to use, that is before and after. COVID-19 has pushed Dominica's tourism in uncharted waters and important changes in procedures are being implemented to sustain livelihoods within that sector. That I do not believe in the history of tourism in Dominica, we have ever experienced anything comparable to COVID-19. We are confronted with an invisible enemy and we need to protect ourselves as best as we can from it. I do not believe in the, fu the future will be normal as we used to know it. I don't foresee what we used to know as normal very soon. So that means we have to drastically and radically change our operational methods to protect ourselves, our friends, our clients, and the people we associate with. I just want to highlight a little bit on masks. Sometimes when you pick up people, they have been traveling for many hours, coming from a long way from Dominica, and they're tired. So when they get to the vehicle, they may suggest to you that, can they take the mask off? No. We must be firm. We must insist that they keep the mask on. We also have some people who, when they get in the vehicle, they have a tendency to slip the mask below their nose. That is not good. We have to insist and we have to be firm that they wear the mask properly. Because what we're doing in carrying out these procedures and guidelines, we're not only protecting ourselves, 
we're protecting our families because we are exposed to something that we don't fully understand. And if we become infected, we're taking this home to our families, our friends, the people we associate with. So we have to be firm in carrying out these procedures. A systematic relocation of Campbell residents on the cards for next year. Campbell is among the many vulnerable communities in Dominica which have been earmarked for relocation to ensure safety of people and property. Member of Parliament for the Maho constituency, Ruben Blackmore, says the relocation of Campbell residents will begin in 2021 as the residents have endured several adverse impacts of natural disasters over the years. What about the people of Campbell who have been through so much? But never forget in 2007, the Prime Minister came to a town hall meeting and advised on your relocation. I want to say to you, starting next year, we are going to have the systematic and incremental relocation of the people of Campbell to the best site in Dominica and Wanna Heights. But it has to be done properly, starting with the first 25 most vulnerable families. Blackmore was speaking at the recent handing over of apartment units to families in Jimit. He assured residents that housing projects have already been approved for other communities in the constituency. We have already gotten the approval from the Prime Minister to construct 45 apartments in Massa. We have already identified the lot, but it's privately owned. And of course, the Ministry of Housing has to enter into negotiation with the owners. 75 apartments will be built in, Cain, in, Mass, in Cainfield, Cainfield East. It's a little easier but because the land is owned by the state and it's going to be extra spectacular. Housing projects are also on the cards for Layu Park, Taru and Warner. And the Minister for Housing, Reginald Austrey, says the Labour government has made the issue of housing a priority, something he says did not exist under previous administrations. The senior minister told recipients of housing units at a handing over ceremony last weekend they will need to show appreciation by taking care of their new homes. You have to take pride in it. Normally when people give you a gift, when you pay for it, you don't worry, I pay my money. But when you receive it as a gift, you must treat it with pride, with dignity, and with respect. And that is not just a simple gift. People get their birthday, they give you a little basket of flowers, $75, buy fruits and flowers. That is what we know as gifts. Today, you're receiving a gift of $300 and plus thousand dollars. Never in your lifetime did you realize that you would ever receive a gift from a government. Because there were governments before us. We had issues before this government that were issued, I told you, since 1979. And I read to you the number of times that we have been challenged as far as housing is concerned. But housing was never a priority. Austria says in the past, housing was always a low priority, but the government of Dominica has recognized the importance of adequate housing and the need to stabilize families. Recognizing the need that our children should grow up in a decent environment, that they should become productive and decent citizens. We recognize that housing probably is one of the few ways out of poverty. It gives you peace of mind. That your house won't leak. Your children don't have to go out in the night at 3 o'clock in the morning to relieve themselves. That you don't have to take a bath outside behind two sheets of galvanized and look into see who passing to see who taking a bath. And of course, other things too, you know, that you were doing because you just did not have the comfort. You don't want that adequate. And when your children go to college, they will be laughed at and scorned because they grew up on a poor family and people pass them walking across the road going to dump whatever in the sea. That was our septic tank. In the sea we used to go and do it. Today our children will feel proud and they can tell their friends that I have air condition in my house. I have solar water in my house. And I have a better bathroom than you because what you have in your house is hotel style bathroom. That is what the Dominican Labour Party You're watching Channel 5 News. We'll have more after this. A new in-home experience is here. 
All your services bundled into one simple plan. Faster, more reliable Wi-Fi so that you can binge, play and stream uninterrupted. Unlimited flow local landline minutes mean you can talk and talk and talk. Plus the best in TV entertainment with over 120 channels and 29 in HD. All for $160 a month with the new All-In Bundle. With flow, it only gets better. This video has been produced by the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, to help small businesses go digital. Hello, my name is Richard. I always keep an eye on my customers' needs to improve my service. That's why I have implemented new payment methods that are preferred by my customers. I immediately activated bank transfers that allow my customers to send me money directly from their bank accounts to mine. Introducing different forms of payment has allowed me to expand my customer base. I also enable payments with credit and debit cards. We must also keep abreast of new form of payments. For example, mobile wallets, with which you can pay or receive money. It's like having cash, but on your cell phone. Reactivate your business and discover new ways to reach your customers. More guides and templates are available for download. Visit bb.undp.org. E-Future is now. We are strong, we are resilient, and we will get through this together. But these are stressful times, and it's important to also practice good self-care. It's normal to feel overwhelmed, anxious, or afraid. But there is hope. Reach out to someone, connect with your friends, stay in touch with your community, and know that you are not alone. We're in this together. This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. An appeal to the United Nations to provide guidance and hope to countries across the world amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. Andrea Lui explains. This was among the concerns raised by Foreign Affairs Minister Dr. Kenneth Daru when he addressed the 75th session of the United Nations General Assembly on Tuesday. Dr. Daru said the onset of a second wave of the pandemic is already having an impact on small island developing states. For small states like ours, this potential second wave has drastically raised the stakes and if we do not rise to the occasion, we could lose an entire generation. Mr. President, at every level of our response to COVID-19, we have respected the fundamental rights and freedoms of all our citizens. This crisis has however resulted in job losses to many of our citizens, particularly those working in our fragile tourism industry. This threatens to undermine the development gains that we have made and to plunge many of our citizens into poverty. Dr. Daru says in the face of the pandemic, Dominica has done well in the management of its COVID-19 cases. When Dominica recorded its first active case of COVID-19, the government immediately imposed responsible measures in accordance with World Health Organization standards and protocols. Our government adopted a series of containment measures which included enforcement of curfew hours and the closure of all ports of entry, educational institutions, non-essential businesses, and public services for a period of three months. As a result of these actions, and with the support of every citizen, we united in a collective fight against the pandemic, a fight which resulted in the Commonwealth of Dominica being ranked very highly among countries that have remained steadfast in their goals of reducing and eliminating all active cases of the pandemic over the past eight months. Dr. Daru pointed out that guidance and collaboration are key in navigating through the ever-present shocks, both natural and man-made, to small island developing states. As leaders of our respective governments, the task is always to provide guidance and hope to our populations. This is a greater challenge for small states like Dominica that must simultaneously battle the effects of climate change, order external shocks, and our inability to access concessionary financing to build the necessary resilience to natural and economic shocks that are way beyond our control. And one prominent Dominican who has gone through the required protocols upon her return has some advice on how those wishing to travel to Dominica can make things easier by adhering to the COVID-19 protocols. 
Dr. Violet Coffey is Senior Lecturer in Events and Tourism Management at the University of Bedfordshire. It is incumbent on all of us to ensure we remain updated current developments so that we can take informed decisions around our travel plans and implement what I have now coined as responsible COVID-free travel practices. Being responsible involves taking preventative measure of social distancing, wearing masks, washing our hands frequently for 20 seconds, but most importantly, avoiding contact, unnecessary contact, and extremely large gatherings long before traveling. For those of us who may need to travel for emergency family matters, like I had to on the spur of the moment, this level of ongoing preparedness makes implementation of responsible travel practice much easier if and when the needs arises. Dr. Coffey says the right mindset is important if one is required to travel at short notice. Understanding in my case that my siblings are of a vulnerable age and were super stressed because of a family death made it easier for me to accept the fact that I had to go through 14 days of quarantine and to ensure that I did not make the news headlines, like we heard earlier, for the all the wrong reasons. Keeping ourselves safe and the persons that we love safe, keeping our country safe, is a burden that we in the diaspora and here at home all have to share in these difficult and trying times. And a flood warning was issued for Dominica was expected to remain in effect up until 6 p.m. Wednesday. Marshal Alexander is Senior Met Officer. The Dominica Meteorological Service has issued a flood warning for Dominica. Unstable conditions due to an approaching tropical wave is expected to generate cloudy to overcast conditions with pockets of moderate to heavy showers and thunderstorm activity along with gusty winds across Dominica during this afternoon. As a result, flash flooding can be expected. People in areas prone to flooding, landslides, and falling rocks are advised to be vigilant and to take all the necessary precautions to protect life and property. The Dominica Meteorological Service will continue to monitor the situation and the flood warning may be extended, downgraded, or discontinued as necessary. Flow helps you stay connected to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy seven days of unlimited social messaging, three gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, 700 local anywhere calls and texts with the always-on prepaid plan, all for $29. Keep your number when you switch to Dominica's most reliable LTE network. Buy wherever you top up. Switch to Flow. It only gets better. We are resilient and we will get through this together. But these are stressful times and it's important to also practice good self-care. It's normal to feel overwhelmed, anxious or afraid. But there is hope. Reach out to someone, connect with your friends, stay in touch with your community and know that you are not alone. We're in this together. This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. A new in-home experience is here. All your services bundled into one simple plan. Faster, more reliable Wi-Fi so that you can binge, play, and stream uninterrupted. Unlimited flow local landline minutes mean you can talk and talk and talk. Plus the best in TV entertainment with over 120 channels and 29 in HD. All for $160 a month with the new All-In Bundle. With flow, it only gets better. To end the news, the headlines again, NBD launches new financing initiative expected to stimulate growth within the small business sector. Foreign Affairs Minister Honorable Kenneth Daru tells the UN Dominica has done well in managing COVID-19 cases. And no community transmission as 7 out of 13 COVID-19 cases confirmed since the reopening of borders remain in isolation. You may access the news on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the production team, I am Julian Morris. Thank you for watching. Join us tomorrow.